Less than a week away from the first GOP debate, but as Donald Trump's rivals look for their moments in the spotlight, the former president could completely steal their thunder by timing his surrender at a Georgia jail to coincide with that debate. One former senior Trump campaign aide telling NBC News it would be a smart plan for counter-programming. Let's bring in NBC News senior national politics reporter Jonathan Allen, host of Simone on MSNBC, Simone Sanders Townsend, and former Republican congressman from Florida, David Jolly. So, John, you write that it's not at all hard to imagine Trump turning his jailhouse arrival into an O.J. Simpson in the Bronco-level spectacle. At the same time, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is telling the debate audience about how he lowered the state's pension assumptions. So is this still in the idea stage or is this what what we should expect to happen? It's a great question, Anna. I think Donald Trump does what Donald Trump wants to do. Uh, people who are supportive of him, some outside Republican strategists uh, noted to us that there's just uh, a tremendous opportunity for him to steal the thunder of a Republican debate. And again, um, you know, this has been his party for the last eight years. Uh, and. Uh, whether that means turning himself in to be booked uh, at the same time as the debate, doing it earlier that day, or potentially, as one uh, person suggested to us, the day after to sort of rob anybody who did well in the debate of momentum, uh, there is a tremendous opportunity, again, for him to uh, get in there and, uh, and remind people that he is bigger to most Republicans than any of the other candidates or maybe all of the other candidates combined. And for that reason, Congressman, if Trump's not at the debate, will people tune in? Do you think it would have the same level of interest? Uh, absolutely not. And I think what we do know, to Jonathan's point, is Donald Trump is going to control the storyline for that news cycle, either because he simply doesn't show up, and so the story is <clears throat> all these other lesser-known rivals aren't making the, you know, making the stage presence that Donald Trump otherwise would have, so he's going to diminish their statute. Uh, you know, they're standing in the race, or he's going to do as Jonathan has reported. Perhaps he sub submits himself for surrender or arrest that day, or perhaps he counter programs. But Donald Trump will absolutely control this narrative. Importantly, politically, for Republicans, because they believe he's a victim, but nationally, because we're about to see a former president surrender himself for arrest once again. Simone, sticking with the, the debate conversation for a minute, our Monica Alba has exclusive reporting about what Democrats are planning for next week's debate, including a billboard campaign in Milwaukee contrasting the MAGA agenda with Biden's record, they say, including a billboard truck that's going to circle the venue as the GOP candidates take the stage. Democrats, we know, will also have an ad campaign in battleground states. Is this the best way for Democrats to battle Republican attacks against Biden at the debate? I think it's a really important strategy, and those um, ad campaigns that the Democrats are going to be putting up, this will also be the start of their paid media campaigns, specifically for African American and Latino and Hispanic media. To, and again, I've been saying, Anna, it's very important to get out there early. Folks, Democrats cannot just uh, afford to wait until, uh, you know, next summer to start communicating to those very important base voters that they're going to need to turn out. I also think you're going to see some folks on the ground, as Monica um, had in her reporting as well. And uh, the reality is there will be two people that will be attacked relentlessly on that debate stage come next week, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And Donald Trump is going to do what he's going to do to blunt the criticism of himself and counter-program, and Joe Biden needs to do the same. John, I want to take a look at some polling from the Associated Press with Republican voters specifically supporting Trump. His support's very strong, 74 percent. But take a look at when you broaden out and look at across the political spectrum, look at this, 53 percent of Americans say they will definitely not support Trump if he is the Republican nominee. Another 11 percent say they would probably not support him in the 2024 election. Trump hardly needs to, to try at the moment in the Republican primary process, but are warning signs growing for the general? I mean, there are absolutely warning signs all over the place for Donald Trump or Republicans about Donald Trump. Uh, that, and some voters in the Republican Party say uh, in interviews in New Hampshire and Iowa and other early states that they're worried that if Donald Trump gets nominated, he can't win. That said, 
Uh, there are warning signs for the Democrats, too. If you look at the head-to-head -head polling between Biden and Trump, it's pretty much dead even right now. Obviously, it matters uh, because of the Electoral College, where uh, where people are shifting, that is to say, and uh, where people are open to shifting. Um, you know, we've had close elections for, you know, basically the last generation, with the exception of Barack Obama's uh, win in, in 2008, and, and maybe you could argue his 2012 win. So um, I expect this election to be close, no matter who the nominees are in the two parties. And Donald Trump will try to make uh, Joe Biden, uh, you know, unappealing to more than 53 percent uh, if Trump is unappealing to 53 percent. Okay, Congressman, let's not talk about Trump for a moment because he's blowing away the Republican competition right now. But the battle for second is getting kind of interesting. We saw in the latest Emerson poll out of New Hampshire, Chris Christie making some gains, Ron DeSantis slipping there. While a, a new Fox News poll out just yesterday shows gains for Vivek Ramaswamy nationally. I, I'm wondering who do you think is maybe the dark horse of this race? Who are you keeping your eye on? And what do you make of DeSantis continuing to slip? Yeah, look, I remain watchful of Tim Scott for a very specific reason. He has the traditional aspirational Republican message. You can you can qual have qualms about his ideology, certainly, but he hasn't really taken the bait too much. He slipped up. He, he doesn't fully want to hold Trump accountable, but he's focused on an aspirational message, and he's spending a lot of money in Iowa. So I think that's somebody to watch. The telling thing here is, to your point, Anna, everybody is now looking to be the replacement for DeSantis, not the replacement for Trump. They're trying to move into DeSantis' spot. And I think what we've seen is DeSantis simply was too hot, too early, too confident, too arrogant, and now has hit a ceiling. And it's down from here for him. Simone, your take. Look, my take on the polls are that the state polls, I think, are the most important here. You see Chris Christie doing well in New Hampshire because that's where Chris Christie has invested. As, uh, you know, David said, Tim Scott has put a lot of money into Iowa, and you see him doing well in Iowa. Chris Christie has basically said, Iowa is not my game. I'm going all in on New Hampshire and other states. So I would watch for more state polls. You know, NBC News is going in on the Iowa state poll. They're partnering. Uh, we're partnering with the local um, entity there because the state polls are what matter. And where there is movement in the state polls, that is, I think, very reflective of the temperature of the voters.